All right. Next up, uh, we're going to talk about buying a house. Mm, People love, love they want to know. They want to know how to buy a house, how to do real estate. The question is from Shillbilly. And the question is, with mortgage interest rates approaching 8%, does it make more sense to put as much down as possible and driving down the principal instead of investing in a brokerage? What do you think? Well, wait a minute. This is a I loaded know. question. I don't know if it's no, an no, either but, but or. I can give some clarification and yeah. let Bo give even mm -hmm. more detail. Is that realize that there's multiple steps that 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 shill Billy just I feel ridiculous even saying that. Um, there's emergency reserves, which is you know because that's when you're figuring out down payment. You not only have the down payment, but you have to make sure that you don't exhaust your emergency reserves at three to six months. And then when you're talking about doing after-tax accounts, like savings and investment accounts, that's really a step seven of the financial order of operations situation. So I, I think I'll, I'll speak in broad terms and then let Bo put the details. I think when interest, when you see mortgage interest rates close to 8%, obviously a bigger down payment is better but you've got to make sure you're not squandering the opportunities of step four, your emergency reserves, steps five, and step six of the financial order operations. Because, like I said, it's a step seven when you're when you're you're taking away from an investing in an after tax account. Yeah, this one is a really really hard one. Uh, where I'm going to argue that general rules of thumb are more difficult to apply. Because it really comes down to your personal and unique circumstance, show Billy. Because it depends on what does your overall asset picture look like? How much do you have in retirement accounts? How much do you have in after-tax accounts? How much do you have in your emergency reserves? How old are you? How far away from financial independence are you? When will you likely need these dollars? All of these different pieces of the conversation come into play as to whether you should put more money down or not put more money down. Here's what we do know, though. When it comes to buying a house, we have an entire checklist out there. You can, do, you can go to moneyguide.com slash resources, look at our home buying checklist. There are some things that you do need to abide by. You need to make sure that you're going to be in the house for at least five to seven years before you purchase. You need to make sure that uh, if this is a first house, you don't have to put 20% down. But if this is your second home or subsequent homes, 20% is your minimum. Like You better be showing up to the closing table with at least 20%. Any amount above that comes into sort of this nuance that we're talking about. And then you have to make sure if you do opt for the lower down payment so that you can leave the other assets working for some reason, you got to make sure that the total housing cost does not exceed 25% of your gross income. If you can stay inside those lines, you're going to set yourself up to be in a solid place. But there are a lot of different things to consider as to whether I should be really aggressive with my down payment. Should I liquidate uh, after-tax assets for my down payment? Because I am of the opinion, write this in pencil if you're taking notes, while interest rates are approaching 8% right now, I just don't know that I believe they're going to stay there, yeah. Brian. I don't know that I believe that they're going to stay there. I think that realistically, there might be an opportunity in the future where interest rates come down and we're able to refinance. So folks who got that 6.5%, 7.5%, 8% mortgage might be able to refinance at like 55 you know, five, five and a half percent, something like that. While it would have been great to have put a lot of money down and save that 8%, I don't think what I'm going to do at that time is say, oh, well, great. Now that rates are lower, let's do a cash out refi and put that money to work because then you are moving back out on the risk spectrum. That's not something that you'd want to do. So I don't know that having to be like incredibly aggressive, trying to get as much down as possible is absolutely necessary because I think there will be some opportunities in the future to alleviate that interest rate concern. Whereas, let's say that rates don't come down for five, six, seven years, that money that you took out of your after-tax account to do that down payment has not been working for you for five, six, seven years. So it's just something to consider, but it's really nuanced. This is for sure like one of those take the relationship to the next level type questions, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great question though. But And it's definitely something that's sitting out there in a lot of people's mind, but we gave, you know, Shill Billy, a, a lot of things to think about.